about two and a half, three years ago, in two and a half years ago, in 2021, the volcanic system here in Reykjaneshryggur, the Reykjanes Peninsula, woke up again after centuries of dormancy. We've had three really interesting, fun little volcanic eruptions around Faraldrasfjall, the mountain behind me there somewhere, in the past, in this, in these past years. Uh, I've hiked to see those things. It's been really interesting. We've called these tourist eruptions because they've been really nice to see, really nice to, to like, take a look at, really enjoyable and haven't caused any, any damage or been a threat. Three eruptions in two and a half years. Now potentially the fourth one might be about to start and this is no longer fun. Unfortunately, this fourth one is being deemed to most likely be a lot more powerful if it goes. So it started off a few, few weeks ago actually with a new series of earthquakes, which have been started around the, the Blue Lagoon and the power plant at Svartsengi, but have been moving closer and closer to the town of Grindavík. Um, right now, the main effort of the event seems to be concentrated underneath the town itself. This is a long volcanic fissure about 15 kilometers long and latest measurements show the the magma underneath the ground to have broken up and be only about 800 meters uh, below the, the actual surface underneath the town itself or very close to the town itself there have been damages already damage to property in the town we've seen roads being broken up uh, roads collapsed um, earth has been 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 uh, well, sinkholes have formed in the ground, there have been cracks in buildings, utilities have, have gone and so on and so forth. The town has been evacuated, so thankfully no harm to people as of yet, and the town has been evacuated. The people of Grindavik are, are now living in, well, staying with relatives, living in, in, in refugee camps, pretty much in, in Reykjavik and other parts of the country in the, here in the southwest. But this is no longer a fun thing. This is a, a if this happens, this will be a more devastating eruption, most likely a lot more powerful than the ones we've seen before, and is more likely to cause serious damage. Of course, if this comes up in the, or very close to the town itself, and lava flows into the town, we're going to see a scale of destruction that we've not seen here in Iceland since the Westman Islands eruption in 1973, when that town uh, was devastated by an eruption. So yeah, I don't know. If this happens, of course, we'll try to, to get a glimpse of it. I, I want to see it if it happens, but this is no longer something which we're looking forward to, excited about or hoping to see, because of course we don't want to see the, the town of, of Grindavik suffer or see damage to other infrastructure in the area. This is the situation in, in Iceland right now. Uh, like I said, the town has been evacuated. There is a police presence which has cordoned off the town, so nobody's allowed to, to to leave or enter the area. The authorities are just waiting for latest measurements. Um, it seems like nothing has been happening since late last night. Today is Sunday, yesterday was, was, was Saturday, yes. We haven't seen any, any major developments since Saturday, since last night, but they're still saying that there's a very high likeliness of, of an eruption. Thankfully, the epicenter seems to be moving slightly north away from the town of Grindavik, fingers crossed, but yeah. It still could mean that it would erupt close by and lava would flow into the town. So again, we're, we're just hoping, hoping for the best. Um, if it happens, that it happens away from Grindavik. And also if it happens, my hand is tired. Also that if it happens that, uh, yeah, it will be not a big, big event. But they are expecting this to be more powerful, more likely than the ones we've seen in the previous years. Yeah, that's it. Um, just to be clear, there's no threat to, to Reykjavik, there's no threat to, to Keplavik, uh, the airport or the, uh, or the town. Um, Grindavik is the town which is being threatened by this at the moment. No other settlements should be affected directly, of course indirectly. It could affect infrastructure in the area with power and, and, uh, and heat production. Those utilities being produced at Svartsengi, very close to Grindavik. Grindavik is a town of almost 3,000 people. Uh, so you can imagine, it's not, not, not a large town on, on any scale, but Iceland has a population of less than 400,000. So this is somewhere close to 
From a close to 1% of the population which is being affected by this directly and has had to evacuate their homes. So again, it's probably one of the reasons why this has, has made its way into international news. This might not be a massive event on a global scale, but it's a pretty big one on our scale here in Iceland. Um, I think responders, the official, official responders, the science community, everybody has, has really dealt with this so far very nicely. In a calm fashion, organized fashion, I think good steps have been taken, so I'm very confident in, in how the authorities are, are, are handling this at the moment. But again, just fingers crossed that this doesn't lead to or doesn't become a, a natural disaster which affects people or, or people or animals or just doesn't have too big of an effect. Yeah, I'll I'll keep you posted if something happens. Um, until then, until then. Hope you have a good one.